What's up everyone, Joe Gray here today to talk about the Beyond Power Voltra Once. This guy right here has been in the gym for over a year. This is a pre-release version of the Voltra One. And this one has been here since January of 2024. So a full six months of use. Myself, my wife, my daughter, friends and family coming in and out of the gym, taking a shot at them. And today I'm going to share our thoughts of this long-term view uh, answer some of your questions around durability, the battery life, all kinds of good stuff. So now hopefully at the end of it, you can decide if this is the right purchase for your home gym or not. A couple of cleanup items for you. Beyond Power did send both of these to me for free. Sometimes I'm a pretty lucky dude. On top of that, I have an affiliate link in the description below. If you click that, I get a kickback at no cost to yourself. So if you do decide to buy a Voltra One, please take the time to click that link. It really does honestly help and it takes you just a couple of seconds. I appreciate your support. Let's get into the review. Just in case you don't know what the Voltra One is, let's dig into a quick overview. It is a rack attached cable type unit with a 200 pound resistance profile and it all comes in this magnesium alloy case that's all the motors, internal workings, all the fancy smancy technical stuff. Everything is in this small little tiny dude right here. On the outside, we've got the mounting plate on the back, which hooks into any of the mounts Beyond Power offers and locks in tight. The Vulture was designed to be an add-on to an established home gym with a rack, bars, plates, you name it, as the mounts are all meant to attach to a rack in some fashion. This is fundamentally different compared to all of the other smart type gyms we've seen in the past, things like the Tonal and other ones, where they were trying to be the entire home gym. This is really an addition to an already well-established home gym. You've got the LCD screen where we can power it on, choose our mode, adjust the resistance and a number of other features and get to work. The Vulture One does have an app Unfortunately, it is only for iOS, so this Android user has no experience with it. Sorry, won't be covering that today. The most standout features of the Vulture One are the 200 pound resistance profile, which is a one to one ratio, meaning that this is actually 200 pounds, not like a lot of cable systems that might say 200, but it's actually a two to one, which means you actually feel 100 pounds. The Vulture One has no subscription model built in and uses non-proprietary cable attachments. The mounts themselves can attach to a two by two, two by three, three by three, I think even a four by four with one inch or five eighths inch hardware so basically any rack that uses kind of a standard configuration, these should be able to attach to. The overall build and construction is really robust and refined and the internal workings, the tons of different modes and configurations and all kinds of stuff really make it stand out from a typical functional trainer cable system you would find in a home gym. Even cooler is that because it's a smart piece, it can receive firmware updates over Wi-Fi, which means it can have an unlimited amount of updates, upgrades, and all kinds of stuff into the future. Okay, so that's a quick overview. Let's dig into all of that a little bit deeper and share some of my thoughts, ideas, and insights I've gained over the last year. The battery is a huge piece to the puzzle for the Voltra, so let's start on that. Think about if you were to wake up in the morning go grab your phone and you have no charge. It totally throws off your entire day. Now think about that if you were to walk into the garage to do your workouts and you can't because your gym equipment has no battery. I've done a number of tests trying to see about how much battery life you get out of typical workouts. Uh, I've talked to buddies of mine like Brandon Campbell about his experience with the Voltras and what we've both kind of come to is, is that most people will probably get a solid week out of the Voltra Ones without any charge. Now that number is kind of variable and let me explain why. The battery is similar to your phone. If you leave your phone on the counter and don't do anything with it, it'll last a lot longer than if you were to stream a movie while texting your friend, while downloading a recipe, while whatever, right? One wrap versus five wraps, 
five reps uses more battery, but also the higher the resistance profile. So if I was to do a low row with 110 pounds for five reps versus my daughter was to do a low row with 15 pounds and five reps, my set would use more battery than hers would. Makes sense, the battery is powering literally the whole thing, including the motors inside. I recently documented an entire upper body workout consisting of multiple back exercises, shoulder exercises, uh, biceps, triceps, etc., all doing two, three sets a piece. And remember, I'm a decently strong individual, and I went through about 20% of the battery. So we're talking like 15 plus rep sets plus warm ups uh, with 100 plus pounds on back work, et cetera, and we only killed 20%. So, unless if you are doing really high volume, all cable driven exercises for your entire workouts throughout the week, this should last a week easy. I can get a full charge in about two hours. If you came out here to an almost or completely dead battery and needed to do your warm ups, et cetera, you could plug it in and probably get enough charge to make it through your workout before your warm ups were done. On top of that, if you can run an extension cord of some kind to the unit while uh, set up, it can run off of being plugged in. Beyond Power has a uh, meter inside the system itself that measures the battery health. The battery on both of these, so after a full year and six months, is still clocked in at 100%. They do offer a replacement battery on their website, but it's like 400 bucks, so that kind of stings if you had to do that. But in general, these are lasting both long between charges and likely fairly long as in their total lifespan. The only negative I found over the last year with the batteries was that if you manage to drain it like all the way down, I think it's once it hits 5% and below, it will not come off of the rack. So you either have to have one of the models like I have here that kind of quick releases and you move it to where you charge it, or if you have a bolt on, one like this, you're gonna have to run an extension cord to be able to plug it in and charge it. That's it, that's my only negative on the batteries. They, they last long, they do what they're supposed to do. Uh, again, they're expensive to replace, but it's not looking like that's a reality anytime soon. The cable is kind of the second piece to the puzzle here after the battery. It is not so much a cable like we're typically accustomed to on a normal cable system that is coated and everything. It's kind of more like a high density rope. Um, out the gate, that was something that I was concerned about. Was this rope going to fall apart, snag, get caught on things and otherwise break down? Over the year and six months, that has not been the case. Uh, it moves very freely, there is no snagging, there is no hiccups, there is no damage. There's nothing that I've seen that has hinted at these falling apart like I originally thought. Uh, if I check the health on them, they're sitting at upwards of 90 plus percent, which again, pretty good. And the nice thing here is, is that these replacements are actually very affordable on the Beyond Power website. So if you had to go that route to replace one, that wouldn't hurt that much. One thing I really like here is the ability to adjust the starting position of the cable. This is great for those of you who have kids or smaller athletes that, that lift with you. I'm able to adjust and get this to the exact right height for Audrey without having to constantly tinker with the rack adjustments. And if we wanted to share and superset, we just adjust the starting position back and forth. Because the cable is on this kind of rotational device in the middle, it functions much like a functional trainer, kind of adjustable pulley station where I'm able to pull to the left, to the right, down, diagonal, any direction, and perform things like cable crossovers, dual triceps extensions, rear delts, whatever it might be, it works. You do not need a different attachment or anything to perform different exercises because of how this is designed. It, it, it works very well. The only knock I've had on the cable so far is that while the unit is off, you can still pull it out and then it 
kind of sits there until you turn it back on and it readjusts. This is kind of annoying. I've had friends come in and family members come in and they think it's a normal cable system. They then pull on it, they see that, they freak out a bit, then I, of course, fix it. So in my head, maybe there's something where they could come up with a lock or a space for this to store when not on, I'm not sure, some docks and that way that doesn't happen. It might be cleaner. You can also see in some of my videos, especially when this is on here, this tends to shake around in like squats and stuff. So the rack gets going and this gets moving. So just something that might be a nice extra refinement is to have this a bit more locked in place when not in use. Otherwise, no complaints with the cable. It functions smoothly, it works as intended. Good job. What do these feel like? That is the number one question I've been asked over the last year. Are they similar to a cable system or not? What, is that, what does that look like? The answer is different. Not necessarily good or bad, just a little different. So because a cable system is normally driven off of gravity versus this is motors that is resisting the pull, there's a little bit of a difference in terms of the feel. However, what I would say is, is if you weren't looking for a difference, if you weren't trying to compare one to another, especially if you weren't like me and had both side by side in your gym, you probably honestly wouldn't notice that it was that different. There are two times where I do feel that this is a little bit different and it is noticeable. One is on lighter warmups. The other one is with lateral raises. I think the reason why is, is because the motor essentially wants to keep that consistent resistance profile. And for something like the warmup set, uh, it's like a wiffle ball effect. I am pulling kind of so hard because it's so light that you can't, the motor can't actually provide that consistent resistance. And with the lateral raise, uh, the issue is, is that it is such a long motion and we go from a really strong position to a weaker and weaker position at the top that you kind of have to lower the weight here to get here kind of thing. And it ends up creating kind of a, just not a smooth exercise in general. Those are the only two times. Otherwise, every other exercise, leg dominant, upper body, rows, pulls, pushes, everything is smooth. A really great request I got from Reddit was to test how accurate the resistance profile was. So was 20 pounds actually 20 pounds? Was 50 pounds, 50 pounds, that kind of thing. So I did two tests to test this. One, I hooked up my crane kind of luggage monitor and my favorite cable attachments and went to and tested 20 pounds, 50 pounds, and 100 pounds. Those came out really close. We were about two, maybe one pound off in total on each. And considering how me holding a static load at the end has at least a little wobble, uh, I'll give them the benefit of the doubt and say that's a pass. The second one was I hooked up a loading pin and tried to see if I loaded 50 pounds on the Voltra for the resistance and 50 pounds uh, on the loading pin, so the loading pin plus whatever I needed to get there, would it make it move or not and how many pounds would I have to add and all that different stuff. I loaded 20 pounds almost exactly and then 50 pounds almost exactly on the loading pins. The interesting part with that second test is, is that it takes about 15% below the stated number for it to kind of kick in, which makes me think that there's probably a minimum amount of force necessary to engage the motor to move it. So 50 pounds, you essentially can't apply just 50 pounds of force. You've got to kind of break that initial starting point. In general, interesting tests, I would say that overall this passed in terms of 
20 pounds being 20 pounds, 50 pounds being 50 pounds. If someone has a better explanation, maybe you're a physicist or an engineer or something and can explain some of my tests a little further, go ahead and drop them down in the comments so that way we can help everybody else understand what the hell I just found out. I mentioned that this goes all the way up to 200 pounds on the resistance profile. It will go all the way down to five pounds and it does this in one pound increment. The cool thing here is that if I'm working with somebody like my daughter, where 10 pounds might be light, 15 pounds might be heavy, we can dial in exactly between 11, 12, 13, 14 pounds as to which one feels right and she performs correctly. In a PT setting or again, smaller athletes, this is awesome. You also don't have to then for micro progressions, find a pin and plates and all kinds of things and come up with the math. It's just all right there, easy to do. There are two struggles with the one pound adjustments though. First is, let's say again, it's me and Audrey working out together. She wants to use 15 pounds for some seated rows and I wanna use 115 pounds. If I do that on a stack versus the Voltra, the stack takes literally two seconds to adjust from low to high or anywhere in between. The Voltra, I have to scroll a number of times or hit the quick adjustment button a number of times to get from her weight to my weight and then again back and then again back, so on and so forth. So there is a kind of a slow process if you are supersetting either with yourself or with another athlete who isn't using the same weights. The other one is, is that again, on a stack, you only have certain options. It's pretty much just fit the pin in the hole and you got exactly what you want. On the Voltra, I found that fairly often, if I was aiming for, let's say 45, I would hit 46 or 44 or even 42 and would just kind of go, eh, close enough. Um, you can pinpoint each one, but again, you're, you're kind of dialing in one by one by one, which is kind of less than ideal sometimes if you're trying to be pinpoint accurate. I think there's a fairly simple solution to this potentially. They recently added the quick adjust buttons, which you can change from one to five or 10. I think they should just have all those on the screen. So if you had a plus one button, plus five, plus 10, plus 25, maybe plus 50, you'd be able to hop between what numbers you want really fast. I know that in the app I've seen that you can literally type in the weight you want, so that might be an option as well. Maybe there's something on the screen that they could enter like that to make it quicker, but in how it works right now, that's a little clunky, again, for that specific use case. The Vulture One comes with a ton of extra features in the settings and various modes within the system, which is obviously something that a basic cable system doesn't have. So let's take a look at some of the tech and features and stuff that is inside this dude a little bit further. Buried in the settings is the ability to customize the language of the Voltra, convert from metric to imperial, change how the screen rotates if you set up the Voltra in a different orientation. You can set up a child protection mode. There are new features that just got released like the direct load. You can adjust the maximum resistance setting, which might be helpful in a rehab facility. You have multiple modes that you can circulate through, including beginner, normal, and sport that each adjust the velocity at which the cable can travel and the max resistance and you can adjust the maximum additional eccentric load you can add, taking it all the way up to 100%. I'm not gonna cover each and every single one of these modes in great detail today, mostly because the video would be forever long and it's already a pretty in-depth one. Instead, I'm gonna push all that into the written review that's on the website. That way I can also keep that updated if they do any firmware updates, changes, whatever it might be. So make sure to check that out if you're looking for the most up-to-date specifics. Instead, we're gonna look at kind of the main modes, which is the weightlifting, damper, and resistance band. So from the main screen, you have weight training, resistance band, and damper mode. The damper mode is meant to be kind of like a resisted sprint type mode, like you're gonna throw one of those parachutes on your back and sprint with it. The resistance band is kind of exactly what it sounds like. It replaces uh, all of those guys over there that I have, resistance bands in your gym. 
I played with those for a while, and in general, my stance is, is that for me, neither of those are really a selling point. The resistance band piece, uh, I have bands, I have a ton of bands. If I'm gonna set up a band, I'm just gonna use a band. I'm not gonna move the Vulture around and use it in a certain way. I wanna hook it up somewhere or out there or uh, attach it to my bars or whatever it might be. It just, it's easier in my opinion to just use bands and bands themselves aren't that expensive. So there you go. The other one, the damper mode, I don't have room to sprint in my garage. Uh, that's also not something I've ever wanted to do. So it's not probably meant for me. I'm a at home power lifter, bodybuilder, not an athletic development coach, trainer, that kind of thing. So those two modes, we're just gonna shove to the side and we're gonna focus on the weight training mode. In the weight training mode, you have the ability to adjust a number of important aspects from the on-screen display. The eccentric and chains functionality lets you add weight on top of your current selected resistance by either overloading the eccentric portion of the lift or by feeling as though you have added chains to the lift. If you're not familiar, eccentric, like in a bench, would be the lowering phase, concentric would be the lifting phase, and a squat, you would have eccentric and concentric. So you would want to overload the eccentric, in theory, because we are, as human beings, stronger in the eccentric. So if you were gonna squat, you could probably unrack and lower quite a bit more weight than you could fully stand up with. Change is a little bit different. There's some accommodating resistance aspects. So with change, you're normally looking at, say with a bench, it would be heaviest here because the chain would be all the way loaded versus when you lower, the chain goes down onto the ground, so lightest, and then up. There's some speed applications there, as well as potentially taking stress off of the joint in the compromised position and all kinds of different stuff. So if you're a trainer or an athlete, or you're trying to maximize your potential by tinkering here, these are two pretty unique modes. All right, with these two, I think they're still missing a piece to the puzzle. I think what they need is to implement some kind of adjustable cam system, similar to like what Prime Fitness has. So uh, let's take a row for instance. If we were doing a seated row, we would uh, be in a stretched position here. This is where we are the strongest. So the back, the lats, et cetera, are the strongest in the stretched position. And then we get weaker as we get closer to the body. So in an ideal situation, we'd be able to match that strength curve. We'd make this the heaviest portion of the lift and it would get lighter as you got here. That way you would be pulling with full force the whole time and then it would reverse as you went back. Chains work the exact opposite of that strength curve. It would be uh, lightest here and heaviest here, which is literally the exact opposite of what we want for back. So it works for some exercises. The overloading, the eccentric is a very cool option. I would like to see the adjustable strength curve in general implemented to really maximize kind of the potential of the smart piece compared to a typical uh, cable machine, which has no abilities to do that. All the modes and settings and different things and tinkering stuff is really cool in general. It's not in the way, which is nice. So even if you wanted to just use it as a cable system, which is what I do 90% of the time, it's easy to do so without having to dig through a whole bunch of stuff. I will say though that as it currently is, without that cam piece, I don't tinker with the other stuff that often. If they created the adjustable cam, if they made it easy to use, something that would be really cool on here, I think, I would use that. I think a lot of the bodybuilders that I know who have asked me about how this works would use it as well. And you could see it having other applications, which I'll talk about in a little bit. The two biggest things, the two hugest takeaways I can give on kind of the internal software, firmware type stuff for these is, is that it works. Over the last year with this guy and six months with this dude, we have seen 30 degree temps and over 100 degree temps and they've worked. 
They've not crashed. They don't have any issues where it prematurely turns off. It interrupts a set. You're never doing reps and it just goes, oops, I forgot what I was doing. There's been no, nothing wrong. It, they just work, which is for a piece of technology, pretty, pretty awesome. Um, on top of that, if there was ever any hiccups, any issues, any anything compared to a normal, let's call it dumb cable system, these can receive updates, which means they can fix them. They can put out new software and ideas. So the cam concept that I mentioned, there's a good chance they'll watch this, start working on it and put it out if they're not already doing so. If you have an idea, they have a subreddit where they have active members. They have a, I think it's, there's a Facebook group as well. And you can email the team, all kinds of stuff and share ideas, feedback, ways to improve, add new function, whatever. And that stuff can be developed and pushed out. And so far, all of their features, firmware and updates have been free. Uh, my guess would be that would be the case forever. Um, as long as they support it. So you will potentially continue to get a smarter, smarter, better, and more reacher fitch, more re more feature rich product for years to come. When I shared this on Reddit, when I first got it, a couple of the comments were about how they saw that this could be really cool for travel purposes. Over the year that we've had it, we also managed to get the travel platform. I had some ideas that I was going to be able to do some cool things inside and maybe even outside with that platform. And I've kind of had some mixed results. So the travel platform is obviously necessary to take it anywhere else. The system is meant to connect to their mounts. And right now they do not have a mount that say straps to a tree or connects to anything other than a rack. The platform is the only option that isn't a rack. So if you wanted to go anywhere outside of this box right here, you're going to either have to have some type of mini rack type solution that you've created or the travel platform. We've taken the travel platform inside on some of the hundred degree days and tinkered around with it in there. You can definitely do things like rows, curls, that kind of stuff. Unfortunately, a couple of the exercises that I was really hoping it was going to do well, things like belt squats and RDLs, it kind of falls short. The main reason is, is because of the range of motion that you can achieve with this. So when you attach the Voltra to the platform, you have the mount, then you have the Voltra itself, and you have the length of the cable, and you have the carabiner plus whatever belt, strap, harness, whatever it is you have going on. That is a lot of room that's get, that is eaten up before you even hook up anything to it for something like belt squats. I think the solution here would be something similar to how the K-Box has their internal workings kind of inside and under the platform. That way you're starting at the floor. So if you could hook up the Voltra underneath a platform and have that carabiner kind of just stick out the top, that might work for something like belt squats. Otherwise, the platform doesn't really work there. Again, you cannot hook this up to anything else. So if you're planning to take this maybe in your RV, on the road, to a friend's house, inside, in the backyard, whatever it might be, you really need to consider those aspects. You're going to be limited to what the platform itself can do or finding some type of rack solution that you can take with you somewhere else. Before you buy the Vulture One, there's a few things you should consider about your space. One is your rack setup. So I mentioned during my Bulletproof Isolator review that there was some concerns about having other things on the rack. It's the same thing here. If you're going to use the Voltra and you plan to slide it up and down your rack, you're going to need to move J cups out of the way, safeties out of the way, straps, monos, pins, whatever it is you've got. If you have cross members anywhere, say one on the floor, like I do, you can't lower the Voltra all the way down. So you're going to lose about six inches of space. 
You have to have a pinhole on the side for everywhere you want to put the Voltra. So that's a consideration as well, especially for those of us with two by three racks. If you have your rack bolted to a platform, you're gonna need to be able to figure out, can you wheel a bench close enough to be able to sit on for things like pull downs and low rows. And remember that the Voltra One comes with nothing but the Voltra One. Well, it comes with a carabiner, it comes with the charging cable, but you're gonna have to buy cable attachments, a place to store those cable attachments. Uh, if you wanna do pull downs, you typically need something to hold yourself down. So you're gonna need a leg roller or some type of pin or something. If you are gonna do low rows, you need something to put your feet against. You could buy something like the Darko Voodoo Low Pulley, which would be a really cool addition to something like this. You'll be able to fold out the seat for pull downs. You'll be able to fold out the foot rest and hook it in for low rows. And then it would just sit on a rack. But that's another $400 on top of your $2,000 investment, plus your couple hundred dollars in cable attachments, plus your couple hundred bucks in wall control. Things start to add up. So before you grab the Vulture, make sure you think through your space, the stuff that you're gonna need to perform the exercises you want to do and what additional costs are going to add up to do so. Over the last year, I've had a lot of really good questions come in about the Vulture One. So a big one was around durability. So will these last in a typical home gym? I'll say a couple of things. So one is, is so far, yes. Uh, we haven't exactly babied them at all. They've been living on the rack just like I think they were in anybody else's home gym. Uh, I'm in here, my wife is in here, my daughter's in here, friends, family, etc. And so far there's not been any crazy beat ups, bumps, bruises, nothing. The fact that you can get them up and out of the way very easily probably adds to their safety, so to speak. Um, I did drop this one uh, a couple of weeks ago while filming the fancy intro of this video. So it dropped from about waist high straight down on the ground. It's fine as far as I can tell. Now I wouldn't go out of my way and beat it up with a hammer or drop some chains on it. I wouldn't hit it with some weight plates or do anything super crazy, but in general, they seem to be holding up fairly well. We had a number of people ask about the color options. Right now, it is this, that's it. Uh, out the box, my wife commented that it looks kind of like an old school Macintosh computer. I kind of agree. It's not terrible. The actual release version is a little bit better than the pre-release version, but I do think they have some opportunity to make it a little more home gym-ish. Some people may have heard about twin mode. That's meant to be where you have two Voltras and they sync the motors together. The good news is, is that that is only necessary for if you're going to hook it to one piece. So like a barbell. If you plan to use it more like a functional trainer where you have two different cable attachments for crossovers, triceps, rear delts, whatever, you don't have to use the twin mode. That's one last step and they work and function as they should. One thing I really like about doing these long-term reviews is I get to do some kind of social experiment stuff. So I can use it, abuse it, and test it for a length of time. But on top of that, I can also get outside of that honeymoon period where things are flashy and awesome and new and all kinds of stuff. Early on, I used the Voltra for pretty much all my cable work for quite a while, and then kind of veered away from it for a bit to use the FT2, and then kind of just let myself figure out what I wanted to use when. If I'm in a hurry of any kind, if I'm trying to do the fastest workout I possibly can, the FT2 is still faster than the Voltra. And the reason is, is because it's a more dedicated piece. Because of that, I think there is still something to be said for a dedicated cable machine versus simply saying that this is a better solution all the time. So there is still something to a dedicated piece of gym equipment over a rack attached piece if your space allows it. Now, what the FT2 can't do, so to flip that conversation, is two things. One, it can't update. My FT2 is the same FT2 it's been the whole time it's been here. Whereas the Voltra has already received multiple firmware updates and will probably continue to do so for years to come. On top of that, the FT2 is where it is all the time. There is no moving that thing. It is way too heavy, way too big. It takes up a whole bunch of space. The Voltra doesn't. I can take it inside, I can move it up and down the rack, 
or as I've seen from others, you can get really creative. I hooked both of mine up to my Radeon sliding bar and created a pseudo at home chest press. You could hook it up to jammer arms. You could get really creative and let's say you have a dedicated leg extension machine, you might be able to hook it up to the three by three posts and turn that into a cable driven machine, especially if they come up with the cams. Now you're essentially turning any machine into something like a prime fitness machine. There are a lot of opportunities because this is so small and can connect in so many spaces that we can do some really cool, creative hacks, DIYs, etc., with this that you'd never be able to do with a more dedicated piece. Okay, so let's wrap this up. The Beyond Power Voltra 1 is pretty freaking awesome. On paper, it does a whole bunch of crazy things, and in practice, it does them all pretty dang well. There is definitely a few areas of opportunity, but because they can push out firmware updates, a lot of those could be addressed by the time you even watch this video. There is one thing that I want to leave you with thinking about though, kind of pondering before you make a purchase. And that is this as a piece of gym equipment. This is one of my 45 pound plates. It was cast in the 80s and spent the majority of its early life in a commercial gym. I acquired it and have been using it for close to a decade in my gym, nearly seven days a week between myself, my wife, and my daughter. It functions the same way today as it did when it was made and will continue to do so for years to come. The flip side of that is the Voltra 1. When we start looking at tech in the home gym, we get out of the idea of a one-time purchase, something that will last forever. Iron and steel will outlive us, but technology has an end of life. At some point, the internal workings, the Wi-Fi controller, something inside is gonna go haywire and it just won't work the way it's supposed to. The battery will die, something will get messed up, you have to replace things, you might have to replace the whole unit, or Beyond Power will just simply move to a Voltra 2. They'll stop supporting the Voltra 1 and again, you're left with something else. What started off as a $2,000 revolutionary piece of home gym equipment is now a $2,000 brick that ends up in the landfill. This thing is awesome. It does so much. It does it in such a small space. And it really truly is a one of a kind piece right now. But you have to decide as a home gym owner, is that the right fit for you? I'm not getting rid of my FT2, but I'm also not getting rid of this. We enjoy this, we've taken it inside. I use it when my daughter's working out with me and different things. All the things I highlighted today are reasons why I think it is pretty fundamentally fantastic as a gen one piece of smart tech home gym equipment. But there's still the piece in the back of my head that says if you took $2,000 or four if you wanted to, and you spent it on something a little more standard, tried and true, you know you'd have that forever. And that's why I leave you out with the Voltra 1. This thing is awesome. For a Gen 1 piece, they absolutely killed it. This is a unbelievable piece of gym equipment that I think if you do buy, you're going to really enjoy. And the coolest part is, is that anything that I had basically negative to say in this video, they can address with a firmware update. So it'll continue to get better and better and better as you own it. So what do you think? Are you buying a Voltra 1, maybe two? Are you setting them up in your rack and doing all kinds of fancy things? Or are you going the old school route with a more dedicated unit? Let me know in the comments below. Obviously, if you've got any questions, comments, anything, drop those as well. I'll have links in the description for a handful of things. One, I'm gonna have a link to my favorite cable attachments. So if you're picking up a Voltra and need to pick out some cable attachments with it, I'll have that there. I'll also have a link for my wall control storage because you gotta store all those cable attachments as well. I will have a link to the written review for the Voltras because as I mentioned, with something like this that keeps having updates, I'm gonna try and build that out and keep that going, as well as the FAQ, et cetera. So if you have other additional items, you can probably find the answers there. 
I've also got a link to my review pipeline, which was recently updated. You can check out what I am working on currently and you can vote on what you think I should work on next. And that's it. If you liked the video, make sure to give me a thumbs up. If you want to see more just like this, hit that subscribe button and I'll be back with more home gymnosomus for all of you very soon. Peace.